Hi, I'm Marius Oosthuizen. I'm joined today by Professor Nick Siegel, extraordinary professor at uh, the Gordon Institute of Business Science. Talking with me today, just briefly, about Marikana. It's a year on from Marikana. Uh, you've had broad experience in dealing with the labor market in South Africa, the economy. What are your views on that terrible incident in this country and what brought that about? I think probably a good place to start is to ask how and why Americana happened. And I don't mean that the police shot uh, indiscriminately on a particular day. What I mean is, how was it allowed to happen that around a big, employ a big employment centre, uh, a squatter settlement was allowed to develop with po poorly serviced, uh, uh, and nobody could see that this was a, a tinderbox. It was in the interests of everybody to see it because the mine's future is at risk, the employee's future is at risk, uh, the industry, or well, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the country's exports, etc., or well, that part would put at risk. Um, because it was, the evidence was there, it was known that, I mean, just give you an example, the, the mines in the wage negotiations were encouraged to allow to, to uh, break, uh, break out of the hostel system to extend a housing allowance to the workers as part of the package. Uh, most workers who had hostel choices n n lived out and often shacked up in informal settlements with perhaps second families. The housing allowance put a bit more money in their pocket and, pay, and because they were beginning to run up debts, uh, indebtedness became a very important feature. It's been referred to before, and these are you know, people, something like 30% a month kind of stuff. You know, this is not 10% a year. Uh, that extra money allowed, so they were then looking to live as cheaply as possible. So that's one of the reasons the, the, the squatter settlements, in a sense, remain. So sort of an unintended consequence of that policy and adjustment. Uh, the, I can assure you that the mine HR people would have known that was happening. The local authority should be providing service, should also see that that's happening and should have been prepared to say, help, we're not coping. The um, uh, Department of Mineral Resources in implementing the mining charter puts obligations on the mining companies to have locally, to contribute to local economic development plans, etc., etc., as conditions of their licenses. They could see that that was not working. Why didn't somebody somewhere say, hey chaps, we're all at risk. So that leadership now, level that uh, sees across the board. And until, and, and maybe people were just too scared. It, it was so big and so multifaceted that they were too scared to even, you know, in a sense, it's easier to put your head in the sand. Right. So uh, how the police behave in a particular day, I think, is, is a very separate question. Those underlying conditions which were allowed to fester, leadership didn't didn't play its part. You mentioned some of the social dynamics around uh, Marikana and what brought that about. Uh, the way in which business sort of stood off from the issue. Uh, government maybe wasn't involved in providing the infrastructure. What would you say to those three parties, business, government, the civil society leaders that need to resolve these issues in our country? How do we go forward from here? I think there's only one answer which has to be uh, honest recognition by the leaders of those constituencies, communities. And there are several. It's uh, the mine owners and uh, managers. It's the employees and as individuals, as, as, as citizens. It's the unions. It's the communities. And it's the local authorities. And then on the government side, there's at least one prime uh, department, uh, mineral resources. But there's also the Department of Labor, human settlements, and so on. So there are many parties. Somebody has to give some shape to, the, to a dialogue, to an honest recognition of problems. Who it should have been, I don't know. I think pr probably Department of Mineral Resources. In the absence of that, and s given the, the Marikana experience and the, 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 the certainty that those conditions are still there and they exist on other mines in other areas, there probably ought to be uh, a Kalema Matlanti asked to give shape to uh, honestly, collectively addressing issues. 
The Farlam Commission has as its sort of second stage, having pronounced on what happened on the day and what should or should not have happened and perhaps appointing, uh, apportioning blame, uh, has potentially as a second stage an examination of the underlying socio-economic conditions. But Farlam is taking a long time. And there's an article in Business Day Today, in fact, which suggests that the second stage may never be reached. So there is a vacuum right now. Yes. My last question to you, Nick. Uh, some would say that Marikana is really a manifestation of a much bigger problem and that we've seen government intervention, we've seen uh, um, ex-president Khilema um, Mutlante coming in and trying to broker some kind of deal. We've seen the uh, Minister Shabangu trying to, to do that. Uh, some would say that we have a bigger problem in South Africa between the classes, the working class demanding change and the, the inability of the mining houses and other corporates, other big institutions, employers, to bring about the kind of change that's expected. How do we resolve this difference of... I'm not sure it's a bigger problem. I think it's a facet of, of the same, if you like, breakdown of trust, breakdown of uh, honesty, of, re of relationships which can genuinely uh, address, identify, address problems, find solutions and, and, and want to achieve them. They, they simply cannot be solved by one party alone. Uh, and uh, you know there are many dimensions. The the, the collapse of the uh, uh, not collapse of Kasatu, but the, the collapse of the role of Num, absolutely unexpected. Uh, who would have thought five years ago that there would be a thing called AMQ, which would displace it in, in on a big mine? And there are many reasons for that. As you probably are aware, the, the Num leadership became a bit remote from the members on the ground. Uh, in the employers became the paymasters of NUM uh, leaders, which further removed them. Um, so NUM lost credibility. It's created a space for a new, inexperienced lot who are quite aggressive. It's very, very complicated. Uh, Again, uh, coming back to the <laughs> need for leadership across sectors yes, and, yes, and dialogue, yes, really. Yes, yes. Thank you, Nick. Thank Good. you for your time. Thank you.